Okay, hi Hong. Um, welcome uh, to our session. Uh, I think this is your first time to join. Um, so my name is Shamsuddin and I'm a PhD student at the University of Porto, Portugal. And I have been uh, the one coordinating this book club uh, together with my colleague, uh, Justin. Yeah, so this is Justin. Hi, hi. Uh, I apologize if you hear um, some noise because my kids at home today. <laughs> so <laughs> I will try to mute myself after the introduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes, really, really happy, excited to join this community. Actually, I found out this community just two days ago. And mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like I just explore into a new planet. <laughs> <laughs> so many, yeah, so many good stuff in there. And I just couldn't help myself explore more and more. So right, thank you right. for inviting me. Thank okay, you. thank you. Okay, right. So let's get started. Um, so uh, we are currently at the chapter three of the book, Superbad Machine Learning for Text. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, stop words. Uh, we finished last week the first uh, second chapter, which is tokenization. And today we will look at stop words. So um, the learning objectives will see what does stop words and we will investigate how to use off the shelf or pre-made stop word. And we move on from using the pre-made stop word and now create our own version of stop words. So that's the learning objective. So let's look at it. Um, in the previous session, we already see how we can um, do tokenization. So basically tokenization is uh, given a bunch of text uh, tokenization is to create tokens based on that text. But it turns out that when we do the tokenizations, not all words uh, uh, carry the same amount of information. So uh, since not all words carry some, the same amount of, of information, we need to do some kind of pre-processing to remove those words that do not carry information. These words are called stop words. So for example, here we have a text here, Geek for Geek, a computer science portal for geeks, and we remove stop word like for. Um, yeah, we remove that. And can listening be accessing? We remove can and be. And look at this. So, looking at this side only, computer geek for geek, computer science portal geek, one can infer the actually the context what this means um, uh, by removing the stop word. So also looking at this side by removing the sub one can infer that this is talking about something reading or some stuff like that. So uh, stop words in natural language processing is kind of a processing that we do similar to uh, what we do in pre-processing where we remove uh, uh, NA, where we remove like um, uh, some numbers. So in natural language processing, the pre-processing we do is to remove useless words, and these words are called stop words. So now we look at uh, what stop. Uh, uh, so why do we remove them? So basically, the one of the main reason previously because um, pre-processing time, uh, our time to process the data is quite expensive. So one way because uh, removing this stop word from the large chunk amount of uh, of text will actually. Uh, allow our program or stop to run faster. So this can be regarded as a kind of a dimensionality reduction of text. Um, so this is why we remove the stop word, just to make our pre-processing much faster by removing those stop words, because they don't add anything to that. But removing all stop words, does that make sense to remove stop word in all NLP tasks uh, or text processing tasks? That's a good question, because not all tasks needs uh, uh, need us to remove these stop words. So let's look at which kind of tasks that we can actually remove stop words and which we not remove text words. So when stop word removal makes sense. So removal stop word depends on the task you are doing. So it depend, really depends on which kind of task you are doing. Um, and there is no rule of thumbs that this, uh, the kind of stop word you use, um, there are many available stop words. But one thing you should know is that stop words, they are more or less good to be removed if your tax is generally test classification. So for example, you are using spam filtering, classification, sentiment analysis, so you can remove stop word uh, because it's kind of classification. But you can also to remove stop word if you are using something like machine translation, question answering, text summarizing, language modeling. Uh, you can know because uh, the stop word, they make sense because um, 
the you need to understand the uh, kind of uh, meaning, the contextual meaning uh, to make this kind of task, machine translation, question answering, language modeling. So you need to understand the contextual meaning. But for test classification, sometimes you don't need uh, the contextual meaning. But of course, also um, you can remove step word. But for sentiment analysis, somehow is sensitive to stop word. For example, if you say David is not happy, and you remove stop word is and not, then David ha David happy. This one, when you do sentiment analysis, when you remove stop word, this sentence will be like positive, while the sentence is literally negative. So even for test classification, uh, you need to look at which kind of domain you are using and what kind of stop word you should leave in your. So if you are using like sentiment analysis, you need not to remove like note because it's of kind of negation. But also, um, uh, stop wall, we have what is called complex model. We have what we call a less complex model. So less complex model like decision tree, um, this kind of machine learning stuff, they are less complex model. And these kind of models, they don't actually understand the contextual meaning of the text. Uh, so they don't make sense from the context. So in principle, you can uh, remove stop word because uh, keeping the stop word cannot actually help the machine learning this kind of co less complex model. But complex model, such as uh, deep learning transformers, LSTM, this kind of complex model, they do on graphs the contextual meaning. They are also called contextual language models. So given something like this, David is not happy, they will understand the context that this is, is negating this happy, and they will make sense to say that, okay, this is negative and this is not positive. So that's why you see, if you are using normal machine learning stuff, um, people in their pre-processing sentiment analysis, they remove stop word. But when you are doing sentiment analysis for, uh, for example, deep learning, transformer, LSCM, you don't need to remove stop word. You just give the, all the text to the uh, model um, and it will make sense and it will learn from that. So that is um, the effect of uh, stop word in uh, less complex model and complex model. So now what kind of uh, stop word to include depend on the task at hand. So you see, for example, if you are doing sentiment analysis, if you rooms not, um, it will negate the sentence. So it's better to keep this word and now test your system without and with this stop word and try to see how it works. So that's what actually um, making up when we should uh, remove stop or um, I don't know, Justin, do you have anything to add here? Okay. Uh, no. Right. So, um, so we now see what kind of stop word we have. So you can use um, off the shelf stop word and also you can create the, your own stop word. But of the shop stop word comes pre-made. So you don't need to create stop word, you can just get them and use them in your text analysis. Um, uh, but uh, there are many kind of uh, this kind of list, uh, but uh, not all lists are equal. Um, but here we have Contida, they provide um, kind of stop word, which is basically multilingual. So, uh, here we have Contida, and you can see uh, it is multilingual stop word. You can see we have many stop word uh, from Snowball, from stop word, from Miss, from Smart, from Ansha, from NLTK, which is one of the um, widely used uh, stop word in Python. So Contida encompasses all these stop word into a single package, and the package is called stop word. And uh, you can get the language for each stop word, for example, for Snowball, this are the language um, they are actually available in the snowball. And also you can get for NLTK, these are the language available for the NLTK. And if you look at stop word ISO, these are the, all the language available in these languages. So you can see the stop words actually, uh, they actually have uh, support many languages, but we can see this one support many, uh, but rather uh, more languages. But these Quantida, oh, I mean Quantida or oh, stop word, package, stop word package, basically use um, uh, the snowball as a default uh, as a default stop word. Because we can see here we have ISO, which is support like this kind of language a lot, this word language a lot. But why um, stop word package consider using snowball as the default word? So let's look at this one. So by default, the stop word, if you look at it here, we don't specify the language. 
uh, say, okay, give out the stop word. The sort is smart sort word. We have like 571. Uh, give us the stop word for snowball is 175. Give us the stop word for ISO. What? So you can see the stop word are not consistent. Um, I mean, they vary depending on the uh, stop word you're using. But uh, literally, I can say that uh, the snowball package um, stop word, they are 175. And the quantity or stop word package, you this as default. And why? Mainly because um, I think I'm not sure actually, but um, I didn't read the paper, but I think this one may be the remove all other stop word and consider what really, really is stop word. So you can see now if you use um, this stop word list 129 and uh, 1298, you will remove a lot of word from your text. Um, but this one will be like a kind of uh, sufficient to remove stop word uh, from that. So uh, yeah, so some of the stop word basically intersect among this one. So that's uh, what uh, stop word. Are. So this is the uh, off the shelf stop word. So if you want to use uh, any kind of stop word, uh, I think the one bus station for that is um, stop word package from Quantida. It contain a lot of stop word. Um, yeah, so that's about the off the shelf stop word. Um, yeah, Justin, anything to add on that? Uh, I don't have anything to add. Can you make your uh, screen a little bigger or the text mm -hmm. appear a little bigger? Hong was asking about that. Mm -hmm. Also, right. uh, bon appetit, Layla. <laughs> okay, yep. So, yeah. So, can we move on then? Yeah. Okay. So, now we have seen um, using of the shop software. But uh, sometimes you may need to create your own stop word because it is not available because like it's not in English or it's in different language or maybe in different domain. So in different domain, you may have uh, because stop word are context dependent, you know, they depend on the domain. So let's look at other things, um, how we can remove stop word. Um, so having uh, uh, in a text. So let's use this uh, basic package that contains some uh, text here. And here we have the text here, and we now use on this token to actually uh, uh, grab this uh, token sword here, and we have them here. Uh, so now we, how can we remove the stop word so we can use this um, stop word uh, in because uh, in from a vector we can remove this one, so we get this. And now here you can see we have like in, and then now in is removed, and we have the. The D is removed from the stop word. So this is how we can remove stop word. But we can also use the package and, and uh, we can use anti-join uh, uh, and also to remove stop word. Uh, this is also the same thing using, so, uh, um, using the snowball, the way we see it here. And now here we remove the stop word. Um, so you can see that the stop word comes pre-made, but you can add most top words to the existing top word, uh, depending on your field or what you do. So we can see here now, uh, you can add a lot of other other top word. Now, for example, here I create uh, a simple vector, and now I use um, a function called tokens from Quantida, and this function tokens will divide the will create a tokens from the given text. And now here you can see it tokenize it uh, based on that. And now I can add. Uh, use wheel mr9 here so this one i may remove them from here so you can see i can use token remove i can put my tokens now i can now put the uh my stop word here and now argument the stop word with some little word that i want to remove in addition to the stop word so this is telling us that um we can use stop words uh, existing stop word to remove but we can also add some word to be stop word to be removed so that is how we can remove um, uh, stop word in our text. Yep. Um, any question, Leila? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. My uh, been such a busy day. My meeting ran over, and so I'm just right. not having one. Okay. Right. So that's uh, about um, how we can remove stop word. Um, yep. Right, so um, let's move on. Um, 
creating your own stop word list. So we now see how we can use the off the shelf stop word, and we can we can see how we can remove the um, uh, uh, these stop word from our text. Now let's move on to creating our own stop word list. Um, Hong, do you have any question before we proceed? Um, no, I'm still trying to catch up. <laughs> All right. It's very, so, pretty new to me. Right. So we have the recording of previous sessions. And if you don't, so right, let's move on. So um, we can create our own stop words um, using monolingual purpose. So um, if you want to create your word stop word, the best way you can do is get monolingual corpus. What do we mean by monolingual corpora? So monolingual corpus is a corpus that is in single language, for example, only English, only Arabic, that's monolingual. So we also do have multilingual. For example, you can see multilingual corpus that they contain, for example, uh, we have like uh, English and Spanish, and we call them code mix. Yeah, we call it code mix in LLP. So for you to create your stop word, what you need to do first is get a monolingual corpora. Corpus, and for that you get large monolingual, not small one, um, not multilingual. And let's use this small data set from this one to create the, uh, to create um, uh, that. So we use uh, frequency count to create that. And here you can see here we use the frequency count, and now we create this stop, and now we use them. So you can see here we have D and three, and these are the most uh, commonly word used in English. But you can see here, we have a word three here that comes here, three. You can see here, we have um, a word uh, three, uh, which is basically not a stop word, but the reason why is that the corpus we are using is called tidy three, three. There are many three in the corpus. So this means that um, whatsoever occurs often in that corpus will also appear as your stop word, even if you use the frequency count. So that means, we have problem here because three is not a stop word really, right? So how can we element solve this problem? Uh, we can solve this issue in many ways. Number one, use large corpus which will give a decent one. So because this is not large corpus, so if you use a large corpus, you will remove this kind of issue. So for example, um, if you use um, large corpus also, you will have problem. For example, if somebody takes uh, a Bible text, Bible text, and because the corpus is large, when you create frequency count, you will see God somewhere here, second or third, God, 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 which is not stop word in some sense, right? So you can see even using the large corpus, it also depend, domain dependent. But the easiest way for, you do, for that is to get a multiple gene subject specific corpus. So one way to eliminate this kind of issue is to create different corpus from different domains. So for example, I can get a corpus from uh, Bible, I can get a couple from Twitter, I can get a couple from a uh, marketing job. So these couples are different, right? And now I can, I need to create a um, stop word from each of these couples. When I create that, then I can find the intersection. Uh, for example, I create in this domain, then I will take like maximum 20. I create in the second domain maximum 20. In that, so I can get a, an intersection of that. That will actually solve the issue. So this is an example I did. Um, this is one language in Nigeria called Yoruba. Uh, I read the corpus here in different domains, for example, and now create the patterns here um, and take the top uh, the top 20. And also I remove the, you know, sometimes there are uh, um, some spelling mistakes. So some words in your corpus will appear only once or twice or something like that. So you can remove them just to remove the processing time. So here I have this and I, I have 20 in single corpus in different domain. And now I create the same thing in another domain, in different domain. So I have two domain. I create stop words in two different domain. Now what I can do is um, this stop word, uh, we, I may have some stop word here that may not actually be a representative of stop word. So what I can do is uh, I need to create, find the intersection using this function stop word, intersection of this one and this one. Uh, you can see it gives me like 16 stop words. So this means that uh, oh, uh, here I have 20 and the second one I have 20, but the only intersection is only 16. So this means that uh, some word may be domain dependent in this corpora. And so we, we now remove the domain dependent and select the only one that do intersect. 
So that is um, one way, and I think the best way to uh, actually resolve this kind of issue where you use a uh, frequency or large copra and some wood appear to have uh, to have high frequency and do that. So that is um, how we can create our stock word list. Yeah, um, any question or any something to add? Anyone to add something? Um, uh, yes, Hong is here. Uh, I do have a question. Um, Justin shared the book text link in the chat, mm -hmm. but when I mm -hmm. open that link, it does mm -hmm. not look exactly the same as you show in the screen. So. Ah, okay. So what we do, we create like everyone. So each of us, um, any one of us, um, volunteer to present a chapter. So when you volunteer to present a chapter, you create like a slide. So this one is like a summary of the book chapter, and with additional of some stuff. Of course, some stuff are not here. For example, this one they are not in the book. So it's like everyone um, can do. Um, so we host this one, this lecture slide. Is also available in the community, and if you want to have a look at it, so yeah, this is just like summary of the chapter. We are not going through the book as it is with the long English. We just write the summary. Yeah, as I can I can see your your um slides has more detailed like the coding oh, yeah. part. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so yeah, some yeah, stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, if I can find it in the community, yes, it's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, we will share. It's already there. Um, I will share the link. Uh, yeah, maybe just. Uh, uh, okay. Um. So, so it, we it, it is there in GitHub. So when I finish this uh, session, I will host. I will uh, push this um, chapter so that you can have access to it. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. So um, I don't know, Justin. Do you want to add something, or oh, Leila? Uh, okay. What do you think of your? Uh... The stop word list you made. Oh How yeah, the language. What about your oh. sixteen stop words? Was that uh, yes. was that successful? Yeah, exactly. It was okay. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I will share some because this is something that I did for one of my recent work. Um, for like uh, sentiment, and maybe if I we have time, I can share the stuff. So, yeah. So yeah, so that is it, and. Uh, the next one so yeah so this uh, stop word for pigeon so we all know what is pigeon right so pigeon is a kind of um, language um, english based creole language so for example in nigeria we have what is called pigeon which you can see that is a mix of english and another some stuff which is creole it's called creole how do you pronounce this justin <laughs> no it's it's what you said it's creole Okay, Creole, right. So for example, in Nigeria, you can say this, someone can say, this food sweet well well, or this food sweet no be small. So what this means is this meal is delicious. <laughs> so this is- uh, I have a question. Do you say yes. it's, what if it has no sugar? Do you still say it's sweet? You say what? So no, it's just in English. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question is, what if it is a savory dish? What if I am having a delicious uh, hamburger? Oh, okay. Would I could I still say this or or? So actually, I don't speak the uh, pigeon quite well because it's not the location I'm coming from. So Nigeria has five hundred and twenty four languages. 524 languages in Nigeria. <laughs> so I cannot say um, exactly how to say it, but this is an example that I know uh, in the language, in the pidgin. Yeah. So, yeah. So, what is happening is that if we use a frequency count, the problem is that the English, uh, these English words will appear in the stop word for the pidgin, right? If we use the frequency count, then it means food, sweet, and all other. For example, this, this means this in English. This means this. But we have some other English words that may appear in the, uh, in the frequency count for pigeon. So how can we create a stop word for such kind of a pigeon or Creole language? So the first thing I do is like um, I get a dictionary of words from 
which which is which dictionary something like that which is stuff like that and just collection of english word in the dictionary and now this is the english of word um now i read the um a text from this pigeon um now i play the frequency count and um you see this is the frequency count for the pigeon corpus so you can see even four four c z they come as a stop word for this pigeon language but these are not actually pigeon right because they are mainly english so what i can do is like is to create the something but to anti join with the dictionary all the existing words in a dictionary in english dictionary so it means uh, it will remove any word from the english dictionary so now here you can see these are some of the uh, these are the stop words from that uh, pigeon so you can see from the pigeon i have previously four uh, the which are english now for me to remove that so i and to join with the dictionary all the available words in a dictionary english dictionary to remove them so now i have like specific uh, stop word for pigeon without words uh, in english which is people uh, talk mean talk waiting what what come out come picking person person so something like that so this is actually um how um, i do that uh, yeah any question or addition yeah so, so this is the last the last data that you just showed that was mm -hmm. like pigeon stop words specific to yeah. nigerian dialect of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you can have pidgin dialect in Ghana, you can have in different countries, they have yeah. their own. Um, uh, uh, I have it in, in the States too. Hmm? In the States here as well. You know, with a lot of the Afro Caribbean community, you hear it a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like in mm. Miami, I don't know. I heard a lot <laughs> in Miami when I was in Miami. Yeah. So people from like, Jamaica, Mamas, things like that. Right. So that removes the English. Mm -hmm. What you're showing removes the English stop words, and you get the specific mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. context. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how we can do for that stuff. So, um, so uh, let's go. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So how many words do we include in stop word? So you can see here, it's like arbitrary. I can select like 10, I can select 20. So it's like, there is no universal list of stop words. So, uh, but what they advise is just start with 20 and now increase with, for example, 10. And now look at as domain experts, look at where you stop as a stop word. So there is no like um, hard and fast rule, like the stop word list should be this. As we saw previously, like uh, some other stop word lists contain 1,000 lists, some contain 125. So there is no hard and fast rule for that. And um, yep, all stop words are context specific. Um, so this is um, something also that we should know that uh, they are context specific. But if you are using in your context some word, they are, uh, appear quite often. Uh, you can add them to your uh, off the shelf uh, specific uh, off the shelf few uh, stop word. Um, so problem with stop word, uh, most stop word lists assume all the words are spelled correctly. So uh, yeah, so this is what happened with the stop word. But uh, I don't think like um, uh, spell wrongly spell word will have high um kind of frequency so that way they will not do so this is one of the so maybe you need to identify what are the most wrongly spelled top word in your language then you can add them to the pre-existing one and yeah this is it and um you can also the stop word are also created manually uh, so for example for chinese they created stop word manually but none of them have been considered as uh subject as a standard stop word because they have an issue with what is called lologram or some stuff like that, uh, which makes it difficult to create stop word along the language. Uh, oh, okay. This is part of the text uh, preferred. This is not for me. And I think that's all about what I have today. What did you say earlier about some languages not having? <clears throat> is it just because 
there isn't like a standard stop word list for ah, Mandarin, oh, okay. something like this? No, what I said, uh, Chinese. Okay, I said, um, as we have seen previously, we create a uh, stop word automatically by using frequency count and stuff like that. But uh, other languages, they create stop word even manually. So for example, Chinese, um, with the references in the book, they created both stop word manually and um, automatically. But none of these, as they said in the book, was considered as a standard stop word because they all have some issue with them. Yeah. So I think that's um, what I got. Uh, I think one of the main takeaway for this is um, uh, is that we should know when to use stop word and when not to use stop word. Uh, I think that's one of the main takeaway for this uh, chapter is that if you are using uh, uh, classification task, mainly classification like sentiment analysis, um, sample training, you can remove stop word. But when you are using other stuff like machine translation, question answering in NLP task, you need to know, you don't even need to, you don't go and say you want to remove stop word. And also we uh, have seen that um, uh, less complex model like machine learning model, like decision tree class five, they don't have contextual meaning. They don't understand context. Then it is safe to remove stop word because they, um, it's not. But language complex models, that such as language models, they understand the context. So in deep learning, you don't even talk about the moving of stop word because they understand the contextual meaning because they are called contextual language models. So you don't remove the stop word. Just give the, your sentence or your copra to the model, you will understand and figure out all those stop words. You will figure out what is meaningful, what is not meaningful. Um, so yeah, so that's about what I get for this chapter. Uh, maybe uh, if anybody has something to add, yeah. All right, so um, I think um, so. Um, one thing uh, we use, uh, I recently used top word, um, uh, for example, uh, in some ways which help us to collect it. So the idea, the idea is that um, um, we were trying to get tweet from Twitter, and for you to get tweet from Twitter, you can specify the API. You say, okay, give me tweet in English, give me tweet in Arabic, give me tweet in Portuguese. But our own case, African languages, the Twitter API does not support, support any African language. So if we want to collect tweet in Twitter, we cannot say, okay, give up me tweet in Pidgin English or give me tweet in Hausa. So there is a problem for us to collect tweet in Twitter. So one way we use is first create stop word in the language, in one language. So if we have list of stop word as here, uh, for example, uh, this one, no. Uh, okay, so for example, we want to collect tweet um, from Twitter and Twitter does not allow us to grab tweet using API for pigeon. What we do is create this kind of stop word. Now, then we throw to Twitter that any tweets from Nigeria that contains this kind of word, draw it, give it to us. That is the only way we were able to collect tweets in languages in Nigeria. So we create stop word because these stop words are specific to that language and they occur quite often in the language. So any tweet must contain at least one of these stop words, any tweet, because they are stop words, they occur frequently. So we create like a vector and now pass and send to Twitter and say, okay, the location in Nigeria, any tweet that contains this language, this stop word, bring it. So this is the way we create stop word and now collect tweet, uh, something like that. Yeah. Do you actually treat them <clears throat> once you've extracted the tweets, the text from the tweets, do you actually use them as stop words or are you just using the stop words, not really as stop words, but more as search terms? Uh, okay, we use this, so for, first we get a corpus, not Twitter corpus, from different domain, and we create stop word from that corpus. Now, we use that stop word to grab tweets from Twitter. Mm. Yeah, so the purpose of this stop word is just to get tweet in Twitter. Just that search, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. That's the purpose of this stop word, yeah. 
Makes sense. So just like the reason I was thinking is that I was kind of translating it. And I was thinking, okay, well, for my purposes, if I'm going to search for tweets that contain <clears throat> drugs, right? I would say my query would include probably weed, pot, marijuana, grass, you know, all the synonyms for, let's say, cannabis. Mm -hmm. And then in the same, in the same kind of con like context that you were using for the Nigerians, you know that if any of these tweets contain uh, Nigeria talk people or something like this, that comes from the specific language, just as if, you know, a tweet contains, well, it's not really the same because pot could be used like a, like a, or flower pot, but whatever, we can, mm -hmm. cannabis. Okay, mm -hmm. that's for sure talking about cannabis. Yeah, so this is what we call, in, uh, it's called in NLP, language detection. Mm. Language detection. So one way to do language detection is to use top word. So for example, if I had, um, I have English top word. Okay, let me see that um, top word. Uh, okay, now if I have top word in uh, English, let me see. Okay, uh, no, why is it top word? Creating a top word. Okay, so now if I have this top word for English and I, I have a bunch of corpus, I want to detect which language is this top, which language, which language is this? Now I can create a stop word. Now and now try to search this language and try to see if the language has like frequency, at least two words or one, three words occur in this text. Then I can say this language is English. Yeah. So that's one way it also is called language detection. So they are basically sometimes used as a language detection tool. So if you have multilingual corpora, uh, I have like a text corpus. I have a in that corpus, I have English, I have German, I have French. Now I have three languages. So now how can I automatically determine this tweet is English, this tweet is Portuguese, this tweet is French. So if you don't have language detection system automatically, like low resource languages, then you can employ the use of stop words. So I can build stop words for these languages and now try to see uh, does this sentence or tweet contain at least two or three stop, uh, uh, stop words in this list. If it is contained in this, I can say it belongs to this language. That makes sense. Yeah, all right. So Johnson, anything to add? Uh, I added all my contributions to the chat. Okay, right. He literally was pitching to my heart. He was like, this is, this is the problems of my life right now. Eh? This is, it, essentially, he basically in one comment encapsulated my entire dissertation. <laughs> the problems that I'm trying to solve. How to, how to contextually understand that this comment is not referring to marijuana, but actually gardening. <laughs> yeah that's the problem that's the rationale behind my my whole research mm, all right. oh wow yeah mm. i didn't even i even left out greenery <laughs> which, uh, which is sometimes yeah. used so, i've heard i'm just like this is the problem i'm trying to um sift mm. through all right full understanding Okay, so I, I think, um, yeah, so next week, um, we uh, hoping uh, Justin will talk to us on staming. Uh, we are excited to hear from Justin as always. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's not about, not about gardening, even though it's about yeah. staming. <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs> and you right. about gardening? That would be really insightful. I need, mm -hmm. I need to learn a lot about gardening. <laughs> Both literally and metaphorically. Well, I'm sorry. I, I don't have anything to say about gardening. I can uh, connect you with my mom, though. <laughs> <if you. laughs> All right. Awesome okay. content. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think we are on top uh, close to the hour. But um, if we yeah. have other things to discuss, we can continue. But um, if we are all done, um, I think. We cannot go. 
All, all right. right. Okay. Um, thank you all. So see you all next week. Um, Justin for the chapter uh, statement and see you also, Hong. See you next week. Thank you. See you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Yeah.